Hello and welcome to Cloth Talk 2.0. Uh, this is episode six uh, today. Uh, again, it's me, Hank Birdsong, and Jason Spangler. Um, and uh, I'm gonna. The subject for this one is going to be organizing your collection. Uh, Jason, what what do you do? What are some of the things you do to organize your collection, which must be massive? Well, I'll tell you, Hank. Uh, I've got a few patches. <laughs> That's one of the things that little kids ask you when they find out, you know, you're kind of a patch guy. They're like, well, how many patches do you have? And my answer is it's not how many patches, it's which patches you have. That's what the best thing a collector is looking for. But I want to show you something real simple that I have used for a long, long time. It's not super fancy, but it works really well for me. And that's just a good old three-ring three binder notebook. What I did for a while was I actually um, made my own little labels. So one thing I like about these three-ring binders is Here's a little label on the spine here, and I probably made this label like 10 years ago. This is my dupe set of Santee Fellowship patches. Uh, I don't have anything on the front here, but then what I have inside of it, oops, got it upside down. It's not a good thing. What I have inside of it is real super simple. This is why I think it'd be good for to show people. These are just sheet protectors, and so I was able to drop in um, using cardstock behind the sheet protector to give it a little bit of weight. These are the early. Uh, Santee Lodge neckerchiefs, the fellowship neckerchiefs that I've got. And then these are the uh, fellowship patches and the way I've got them in here again is just cardstock and then I just have a little piece of masking tape holding the patches in. I liked this because I wanted the patches to kind of you know sort of almost look like a frame like they're hanging in air they're not um, you know inside of, a, of an envelope inside of an envelope kind of thing like that. Um, Probably should warn people that you have to sort of be careful about masking tape. Generally, it's not going to be a problem, but you don't want to use harsh tape, and you never want to use scotch tape. Over time, that'll leave a mark. The only downside about doing this is I flip through here. These are by year. That's how I wanted to show it. But I think I'm going to get to a page here in a second where I've got some floppies, floppage going on, and they do tend to slide on you. So that's one negative about doing it this way. But I had, for a long time, almost all of my collection was was organized this way in notebooks, okay? Hank, show us uh, a system that you use. Well, yeah, you'll the, the the notebook system is pretty good. You'll see here, uh, notebook, of course, I've got a front cover on mine, so you know, this, this is uh, version 2.0, I guess. Um, <laughs> but what what I like to do is, this is, this is actually one that um, I used to help my son get started. He, he, he really wasn't in, into patch collecting back then. He's got a pretty good collection now, but put his name on his phone number because he tended to lose things at a younger age. Um, but what I did was to help him get started collecting solly flaps, I would have uh, pictures. So these are just paper right here, and then this is an actual flap. So when whenever that way he would know what he needed, and then. Whenever he found one, he could just slip it in there. Um, just to show you an individual page, it's it's you can just see this. It's that's just a piece of paper for the one that he doesn't have, and then for the one he does have, the next the next numbers here, like this is an S45, S46, you know, but he's missing the S44, so we just have a sort of placeholder in there uh, until he finds that. Um, he actually. Did a pretty good job. He's got a. He's got a. This is his dupe set now. So he's got. Uh, he 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 eventually got them all, and uh, and now uh, he's he's got the second set he's working on, uh, or one that he can use to trade with other folks. Um, you were showing me something else you had back there for the frames. You you want to share that with with everybody? Yeah, let me lean back here. You can kind of see my little work project I have going on. I'll show you what's going on with it. So what, what my concept here is, is that I've got a collection, and I've kind of gotten to the point with my collection that I'm not really um, that excited about leaving it in notebooks and never displaying it. I've kind of gotten to the point where if I have a collection and I'm pretty complete on it, you know, I want to go ahead and sort of build a frame and put it in a frame so I can display it and share with other collectors. I did that at the last Dixie Fellowship in 2014 and put together a big display, did like a museum thing, and, and really enjoyed doing that. So... What I've come up with is uh, sort of a prototype for what I'm calling sort of a, a, a Jensen frame insert. And so if you're looking at this on the back side, it's actually just a piece of foam board, 
and I have a red flannel kind of um, adhesive to it. And then on this side, I have this is my collection of Niren Rar flaps, which is Goldsboro, North Carolina. And I'm real big about having labels. So I have them all identified. And then what happens is this can slide out. This actually, this uh, plastic sheet is actually just from Hobby Lobby. If you start looking around, you can in your you know Office Depot, Staples, those kind of places, you can find little things to help you organize your scout collection. I found this plastic sheet from Hobby Lobby, and uh, then what I've done is these are not glued down at all. There's no adhesive at all. Um, they're just laying on top of here. And what I'll do is this little insert will go inside of one of Chris Jensen's little black frames and the pressure of the glass will hold these in place so that when I stand this thing up none of the flaps will fall hopefully and so this is my new little thing I'm working on to try to put together a display and Hank uh, if you're going to be at the old Hickory Traderie coming up I'm going to try to have all this finished by then and even try to display it so this is a little more advanced but this is kind of a fun way to display your collection and I'll throw it back to you Sure. That that's that's an awesome way to do it, uh, Jason. Um, and conveniently, they're in a size that you could you know, fit fit into an envelope to send to me if you uh, got tired of those. By the way, um, one thing I found too was uh, I've got a pretty complete solid collection, and I I take those frames to every fellowship and spread them out. And uh, it's it's a good way to get people interested uh, in the hobby because uh, a lot of folks. You, you haven't even seen them before and just displaying them and t uh, gets people talking about them and uh, gets people interested. I think we can talk uh, a little later about you know, how to get other folks involved but that'll be another episode. So you know, th thanks thanks Jason. Uh, that This brings us to the end of episode 6. We'll be back with episode 7 in the near future.